I'm doing a 100 day challenge series building the village in each biome. The meadows is complete and next is the black forest. I will have to start from scratch so I can't bring over resources and bear the risk of being raided in the open. And oh, I'm still not wearing pants. So let's begin. I spent 100 days in Valheim building the village. Day 101, the start of a new journey. I wanted to take a moment to reflect on the hard work doing each of these builds. And the moment I almost lost my sanity oh, to chopping no, no, trees. No, no. Before I leave, I said bye to Brenda and Gregory. And just then a thought came. I didn't name the village yet, so in memory of George, I called it Georgetown. May you rest in pieces. So I head over to my tiny portal hub slash dock to go through the portal that leads to the swamp I found in my last 100 days. Because there was a black forest nearby that was perfect to link the black forest village I was going to work on to a swamp village in my next 100 days. Before I hopped in, I made sure to take a poison resist potion or else. And I head in and already 3 to 4 dragons were waiting there for me. I was able to outrun them thanks to pebbles. Then I saw an old tower up ahead which was perfect for my base of operation. I just needed to evict the current tenant. After securing the tower, I head out to gather wood. I was greeted by my new neighbors, who are going to be very helpful in the future. <laughs> After gathering enough wood, I made a campfire, a workbench, and a bed. On the next day, now that I was settled in, I needed to know if there was a meadows nearby. Before I head out scouting the land further, there was a great of spotter I need to control. So I, like a good neighbor, I dug a nice cozy hole for one and shove everyone in. It was about time I avenged George. <laughs> yeah, boy. To my surprise, Frank was also my neighbor too. I tried to tickle him with my arrows, but he didn't even budge. It's like he gave up on life. Then this happened. <laughs> Sorry, but a troll that can cha cha that good is an abomination. If I ever tried cha cha in, my family would think I was having a seizure. I let it venture further on the other side, hoping for meadows, because I wanted an easy wood and fine wood source. But all I found was the plains, and to make matters more frustrating, there was a mountain in the middle of the island, so that path wasn't an option. So the only other side I could check is where the swamp and the black forest border meets. Before heading back, I decided to raid a few nearby crypts, so I can prepare to start smelting some copper and tin. Hello? Anyone home? Room service? Crap. Holy crap. Oh, oh. Am I going the right way? Alright, you almost got me, you almost got me. Right. Hello there, man. Wanna take a whack at me, don't you? Ah! I later arrive back at the camp in the dead of night, dropping off the sweet goodies, and then head to bed. The next day, I tried the other route, and it was the same story. More planes. So I had to accept the reality that I will have to use Georgetown as a travel hub to gain access to the resources I need from the meadows. So I was back in Georgetown to explore Brenda and George's offspring for food like the scumbag viking I am. Hello there. So after grabbing a few leather scraps and some boar meat, I head back to camp because I needed to mine some copper and tin. While mining some copper, I get the usual nosy neighbor that doesn't have nothing better to do with their time. But I was glad to see one person though, Frank. At first I thought he was still feeling bitter, but we had a non-verbal understanding. Things then turned so beautiful. I would show him where to hit the copper, he would happily break it for me. We were like a team, a powerhouse. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. After a tremendously hard day of mining, I head back to camp. The next day, I made the smelter and killing to start smelting the copper and tin. I needed a forge so I can repair my axe and clear out the area where I plan to put the village. But chopping these pine trees was hard. It took more swings with my bronze axe to take one down. So I head back to spawn to get the deforestation buff. So after turning this once ugly green landscape to a prime real estate for the village, I then focus on the great of spawner that will be the center of the town. Why? Because this is going to give me a lifetime supply of wood, stone, and keeping my sanity. So this is my greatest asset for this village. So I started mining a trench that created a perfectly straight edge all the way underneath the spawner. By some miracle, the spawner can float. And if you stand directly under it, you get a shelter buff. 
so this would be perfect place a brazier underneath it and it would be protected from the rain but first i needed to get some chains so i can make one which dropped from a rate which i'm gonna call jerry the jacket and also it can be found in the swamp crypt so for the structure design i wanted it to be round with a similar umbrella roof design like the portal hub slash dock in georgetown but this time instead of using straw roof I'm gonna be using this new 26 degree roof piece. No, you are completely wrong. That is not a staircase that provides absolutely no shelter whatsoever. After adding the roof pieces, I wanted to add a second row roof structure to give the build more roof depth. So I added another set of four meter co wood on top of the first set that created the foundation, made a one meter wood overhang for the roof and added two 26 degree wood beam and leave the center open directly above the spawner. It took a few days to get the structure up and I was happy with the result. Next I needed to get the barbecue going. So it was time to get some iron because I wanted to start building with stone and get some chains. Before I head to the swamp, I made sure to have a more protein rich diet to feed these chiseled viking muscles. And then I was off to the swamp. I raided about two crypts. The first was pretty small, which was the first crypt I didn't finish raiding in my previous 100 days. Got about 8 iron. It was night when I was about to go to the second crypt, but I hated the swamp at night. So I decided to wait it out for a daytime by the crypt entrance. While waiting, I saw Jerry the Jacket in the distance. Although he was a flying clothing wear, he wasn't to be taken lightly. So I made sure to dodge his hits and send him off to the dirty laundry. Finally, it was daytime. So I head to the next script, which wasn't too far. Once I was inside, I made a campfire so I could rest for a bit. After which, I was ready to delve in. I was greeted by one of those walking cesspool. I didn't have a special name for him yet because apparently they come in female versions too. Oh, hey, hey, hi, oh, hey, hi, who? Going through the crypt was easy. Well, only because I mined away just a small part of the muddy pile and shoot everything on the other side. But when you get too confident, the game has some subtle and harsh ways to humble you. Big boy, hey big boy, come around here. Yeah. Smile for the ah! Further in the crypt, I found the location for bone mass. Honestly, I thought it would take longer to find this. After clearing the crypt on day 14, I ended up with around 90 iron. It was an okay run, just wish I found more. I was finally outside and I was about to do a back and forth trip to the camp. That was when I saw my first turnip flower. So finally after bringing over all the iron I can focus now on building. I took some iron in the forge and decided to mine some stone in the meantime. It is during that time I realized I haven't been raided yet. So I hope not to let my guard down this time so later on I place some pikes around the new structure. Now that I had enough stone to build with. The plan I had in mind is for the stone to wrap around the base of the build and cover the trench to create an underground tunnel. Now for my favorite part. To get the farm working, I placed brazier underneath with the help of an angle beam. The theory is that pebbles carrying in heat should only spawn where the ground has an open sky, which is in this pit, so they can burn. Next is to wipe out the first batch I stuck nearby the hole and let the ceremony begin. It's like making popcorn. Now that our stone and wood factory is in operation, this should reduce the time I spend farming. So while building nearby, it is replenishing my resources. Now I needed to focus on my new home and then the layout of the town. For the house, I wanted it to be at the highest point in the town and was thinking of making it unique. I didn't want the regular square, rectangle or octagonal structure, so I decided to do a parallelogram <coughs> structure. I imagine it in the form of a tower with a two half octagonal structure to the side. So after leveling out a spot, I created an 8 by 8 meter layout for the structure. I started building the walls with the help of a scaffolding, making it 14 stone walls high and placing the stone in a staggered formation. Building with stone required 2 to 3 times the amount compared to wood, so I was burning through my stone resources very quickly. But thank god for this great art farm. Oh music to my ears next i added some wood iron poles for extra support so i can add another row of stone floor at the top to give it more depth then i added the overhang layer for the half octagonal structure i added some angle beams to make it appear to be supported and not like an odd looking gravity defined structure i wanted the roof to have a similar style like the greater form 
because I wanted the village to have a consistent theme to an extent. I added regular roof pieces underneath to ensure I received the shelter buff for both octagonal structure and the stone structure. I created a nice little entrance with a flat open roof giving it more flavor and finally added a balcony. Due to a little complexity of the design and the demand for stone, the build took about 13 days to complete, excluding interior which will be kept at a minimum due to instance. On day 29 was that time again. Unfortunately, I didn't have a proper wall for the village, so yeah, uh, I'm screwed. And to make it even worse, it was raining, and I wasn't rested. But I was more concerned if they would attack the graveyard spawner. I must have the courage to hold my ground to defend this half-baked village as best as possible. I got slapped by Wellington, but I shook it off like it was just a little flesh wound. But then the big guns showed up. My confidence did not waver, did a little dance and slap tactic. Alright, alright, yeah, that hurt a little bit. After recovering a bit, I pulled up my trusty bow because I said screw this, I'm gonna snipe them. So, I was back to using Old Reliable, my butter knife. My confidence was at a peak, so I ran right in with no fear. Got a few hits in, they got few too. But I wasn't gonna run. No, I was winning. I was dumbing it. Oh. So I got a second chance on life, and although the raid is over, I'm still being chased. So I grabbed my stuff and ran away to regain my composure. To my surprise, I forgot I had an at gear and a healing potion. So I started to put on my clothes to get my pitiful excuse self of a viking back in battle just when I was about to unleash my fury. So yeah, good thing one more was around so I could recover what was left of my pride. Little bit later on, I realized I was getting low on food, so I checked my chest to see what rations I had. Oh yeah, I have turnip seeds, I forgot to plant those. So I head back over to Georgetown to cook up some food to get some energy for my next project. Good thing I had leftovers. I was then back at the new village to get started. So I leveled the area beside the house and the wooden stone factory. For this build, I wanted an octagonal main structure with open roof extension structure for a work area and a fancy entrance. So to live up to the high standards, I took the time to make my own stairs, bending it to make a sexy L shape. You can tell it's high quality because I wasn't bumping my toe on every step. For the open roof structure, I wanted the core wood poles to feel like columns. So I added a bit of detail by wrapping the 1 meter wood at the top and the bottom, which made so much of a difference. So because I was running out of stone so fast, I had to do some mining to keep the construction going. After which I took down the smelter and killing at the old tower and created a platform for the work area. I head back to the main structure to work on the roof with a similar design like the previous builds and finish the top using straw attached roof to have a color contrast. From time to time, I would check in on the factory and it would be loaded with wood and stone but there is a growing issue. I was getting too much of everything else. So a storage house will have to be my next project. Later I went back to the blacksmith to do some work. Did some landscaping to connect the pathways and added regular roof under the open roof structure so I could use the forge. I then completed the build on day 39. I plan on to add more detail to make the build come to life in the coming days. Later on, I got an unexpected visit from Frank. I wasn't sure what was his deal though, he seemed a little bit upset. Scratch that, he's furious. But dang, I love that new skin. But we all know how this story ends. No, not that one. You know, I'm feeling sorry for Frank. After I had enough Frank foolery, I thought about demolishing the old tower. But before I do so, I moved the portal that connects to Georgetown to the greater farm, which seemed perfect to be a portal hub as well. After that, I destroyed the tower and collected the stones. So it was time to figure out the rest of the village. So for day 40, I decided to do some more landscaping and pathing made temporary gates to keep the baddies out and leveled out two areas for my next project. To prepare for my next project, I first organized the wooden stone I gathered from the greater farm in a cart. I later on decided to go out to gather fine wood. I needed a lot of it. So I went back to Georgetown and borrowed a cart. During my tree chopping spree, I got my first acorn and a few birch tree seeds that should contribute a lot to the village. On day 42, I started the construction for the storage house. 
I started off by making an 8x8 meter box, focusing on the center part of the structure first, but before I could build any further, I got raided again by the swamp. And man, I was glad I finished the temporary walls. So like a big stinky cheese of a player, I stand behind the walls repairing it throughout the whole raid. Not my proudest viking moments, but uh, you can't argue with results. Now judge me, so I was back to the build, for this structure I wanted it to be basic, nothing fancy. I used wood iron poles to support the row stone walls, I wanted to add a different color contrast and also make some custom columns so that the build pops. I focused on doing the roof first by making the roof overhang in the shape of a square because I wanted triangle roof for all sides. Then later on I got raided again, it was a troll raid. My paper walls won't hold back a troll so I head out as quickly as possible to engage them. I at first saw only one and got worried where was the other. I went around to the other side and saw Hank, the most dangerous of the two. So I tried my best to lure them around until Hank called it quits, leaving Frank as a sitting duck. Where did you learn, Frank? I was back at the project and I added two side structures to create different roof elevation for the build. Now that the roof was in place, I can add my custom columns in to help the build to have more depth. For the entrance, I wanted a high triangle shaped doorway to give it more character and added four wooden gates overlapping each other to make one big door. I head over to the blacksmith to make some nails and grab some fine wood so I could add my second wave of details. The columns look flat to me so I added some item stands wrapping around the column for further detail. After I was finished detailing the build, I grabbed some wood and with the help of the cultivator and the plant everything mod, I added some vines and shrubs to the structure to add more life to the build. Completed the build on day 49 with a few chests inside but interior was kept at the minimum for the sake of instant scout. So it was time to plant the turnip seeds. I didn't have a designated farm so I used a little area nearby the blacksmith to be the nursing ground and seeing I was in the planting mode, I planted some birch trees around the village. Later on I head back over to Georgetown to cook up some more food until I could get a tavern build done for the new village. I got back to the new village and guess who was lurking around? Hank. He was the third one star I've seen so far so it was starting to be a concern. So I was thinking to place workbenches around after to interrupt their spawn in the nearby area to the town. So I tried to sneak my way towards Hank so I could keep the element of surprise. Huh? But Hank was tough as a corn on my granny's foot, he didn't even flinch. But then I thought about putting him to work. So I lured him to a nearby copper ore trying to exploit him like his brother for my sleazy personal gain. Just when I thought things was looking good, here comes slimy pebbles. It was at this moment that he knew. Uh, I don't want to talk about it. Then later on in the night, I set some crafting station around the village. The next day, I finally have a place to stuff all the junk from the greater farm. Yes, I have a chest full of vomiting and diarrhea inducing berries. Multiple chests of full resin grade of eyes, yeah you get the drift, I got a lot of stuff. But it was time for my next project. So far I have been cooking my food in Georgetown, so it was time to build a tavern. So I got all the material I needed and created a 10 by 8 layout, after which I added some wood iron beams to put another row of stone 4 meters away from the bottom. Then add an extra 2 meter stone on both sides of the top and bottom row. Added another row of stone with stairs on top to give the build more depth. Added the frame for the two arch windows. I wanted the tavern to feel fancy so I created my own stairs to recreate the same sexy L shape I did on the blacksmith but a bit wider. I went back to the main structure to add the roof keeping with the theme of the village. I also add more details to the window. Oh, and the birch trees are all grown now. Next I started working on structure entrance making it 5 meter wide and added my custom columns. I added some stools in the middle and wrapped the columns with some item stands. I then moved inside to add regular roof to gain the shelter buff but also protecting the staircase from rain damage. I used my cultivator to add a few shrubs and some vines on the structure and added other decorations. Finally was able to complete it on day 61. The next day I focused on doing stone pathing to complement the new builds, reaped and replanted the turnip and carrots, 
and later shift my focus on the central platform by adding some arches and finish up the stone pathing for the rest of the village. Added wooden beams within the stone platform to create a staggered formation. My vision was to have it withered looking when the rain hits it. I then added some rails to enclose the area a bit and drop some benches to make it feel cozy. I continue building by adding a flat open roof with a few vines attached to it. Finish it on day 64. Overall, it turned out way better than I thought. Honestly, this is my favorite spot to chill. Ah, so peaceful. The next day, I decided to do some foraging and hunting in the meadows for food. Made a quick stop by the big deer dude whose name I can't pronounce correctly. We call him Bob now. After a hard day of grocery shopping, I head back to the unnamed village. Comment below what should I name the new village. I made my way over to my new tavern to add the finishing touch. Nice. Now that all the main bills are done, I can now focus on the village gate and walls. For the gate, I made it 5 meters wide, then I made the side walls 6 stone walls high and added some stone arches on the top rows, both back and front. Afterwards, I stacked some more stone in a staggered formation to make a triangle shape to finish the top. Did a little roofing using 26 degree stairs, but with the help of a 1 meter wood, I was able to place a 26 degree beam through the middle of the stairs to protect it from the rain. I proceeded to work on the front of the gate giving it a 26 degree arch entrance with a little windows above. I added my favorite custom columns and worked on the gate some more. I was happy with the results but something was missing so I added two stone columns with a few details on each side to complete the build. The next day I rebuilt most of the village walls with a new design. Later on I would check on the turnips and carrots. I finally have some extra turnips to spare to upgrade my cooking. Now I'll be able to sip on my home cooked turnip soup and eat some sausage. I later on thought about finding some abominations, rather let's call him Stumpy. I wanted an armor upgrade against poison, but I needed root from him. So I started stacking up on some fire arrows and set out in the morning. Found my first Stumpy in the swamp, seeing it rising from the ground gave me the heebie jeebies. Rather than facing this monster head on, I took the safe but cowardly approach. Oh sorry forgot all about you, wait where are you going? I spent about 2 days trying to find more stumpies, so far I took down 3 and got about 14 root material. So I was able to make a helmet only which grant the poison resist I needed. The next couple of days from day 70 to 74, I spent doing chores around the village. Sorting out the storage again, and cleaning up the Gradoff farm. I did some more hunting, foraging and mined some more coppers in preparation for some little decorations in the tavern. So basically I was all over the place. On day 74, I started to work on the gate for the other side of the village, recreating the same design. I added some watchtowers for both gates and finished it on day 79. At this point, I thought the village was done but after looking around, there was an empty area and also the village didn't have a dock for a boat. While I let the idea simmer in my mind, I made a water well to give this area purpose. For the next few days while thinking of a dock design to connect the village to, I spent some time decorating the tavern so it would feel cozy and welcoming to visitors. Yeah right, like I had anyone coming over. But because it was the only bill I think needed the extra love, I wish I could bring Steve over to have someone to talk to. It's so lonely. I also planted some pine trees along the path that leads to the swamp and added vines to my house. At this point you should realize I am addicted to vines right? So it was time to dish out the dot design I cooked up. I created a curvy and case path towards the seashore using the big stone walls and I had to raise the ground to place a stone floor in the middle. For the entrance way from the village standpoint, I created some custom columns and added curved wooden railings for the stairs. And with the help of the wood iron beam, I placed some stone floors above the columns going across and finished it up with just a few more details. I next switched my focus to where the dock was going to be. What I had in mind was it to be like a little market area but knowing that I had a little time remaining, I may not be able to decorate it to get that full feeling of it. I still wanted to see what structure would look like so I came up with this stone design for the entrance and with a little TLC turned it into this. Now I had to figure out the dock area but my stone supply was getting low and I was building too far from the grade of farm for it to continue generating more stone. So I had two options, grab my pickaxe and head out mining for more rocks or sit in this cozy lobby and wait for them to slowly pop into existence. 
so we all know which option I took. So during that time, I did nothing significant worth mentioning. At this point, I was mentally drained. I eventually got back to the build, raising a section of the ground to have different levels of platforms for the stalls and made some stairs to lead into the water. I didn't get to decorate the dock more. I was at my limit feeling exhausted. This village build took very long to complete. To make it possible, I had to avoid sleeping at nights so I can capitalize on the grade of form working overtime. I really had fun building this in survival. It forced me to think outside the box and come up with new ideas with the limited build pieces I have unlocked. Honestly, I can say this grade of form have spoiled me heavily and I don't think I can build a village without one. This is a must have in survival to reduce the time you spend farming for building resources. I will be making this world available for download on my Patreon, link is in the description if you want to support the channel and have a copy for yourself. It will be updated as I continue with this series up to when Miscellane release. Thank you all for your love and support for my first 100 day video and by getting it to 1000 likes and thank you my patrons and YouTube members for keeping the channel going. If you haven't seen my first 100 day video, check it out right here.